Hey everybody, this is Jen from Garden Jen's Journey. Today I'm going to take you on a trip through my jungle, aka my garden. A lot has happened since the last time I did a video. It's been really hot and then we had a couple rainstorms come through. So this is the first time in a while I've actually been able to do a video. And so I'm going to take you for a walk into my garden, kind of show you what's going on there. Okay, this, so this is part of my container bed uh, garden um, that's along my fence line here. The rest of my containers are over there. Um, but uh, my goji berry is looking nice and tall. I have this in a nice pot. And then I have some safflowers. Just planted, transplanted my roselle. Uh, my roselle took a long time to, to uh, grow, so I finally planted them hoping that they will turn into something really nice or at least I can get some more seeds uh, to try again next year. My safflower is starting to bloom. And then I have some new Swiss chard. Uh, this is my second round. I have even more planted in some more jugs getting ready to go. I have um, this is tango leaf lettuce that I've allowed to go to seed. And I have some chamomile, some potatoes are still going. I have parsley and also tarragon. These I bought from a gentleman at the farmer's market because mine did not grow this year. So yeah, I got those. And then late to the party is my lemongrass. I just transplanted that as well. And then along the dog run on this side, this is Christmas lima bean. And that plant right there is the plant that I am following for the single seed challenge this year. It got kind of shaded because uh, right there where that big leaf is, that's actually a catalpa seedling. Um, we've lived here for five years, going on six years. And we have a catalpa tree in the front yard and um, it throws out a lot of seed pods which look like huge uh, bean pods and in the six years that we've been here they've never produced seedlings uh, this year we have catalpa seedlings everywhere it's kind of interesting so yeah we had a big catalpa seedling there i just cut it down i've got to get some more of it out of there because it's actually in the uh, fence there and it's a triple layer fence i have two layers of chicken wire um, on the sheep fence so yeah <laughs> so anyways that seed lane was um, shading that plant so it wasn't getting a lot of sunlight yet but i'm sure i'll start growing up the uh, fence uh, just like the other ones have okay into the jungle or my main garden um, this garden has uh, seen a drastic change within the last 24 hours as far as uh, you'll see big piles of debris. Um, there was a lot of weeds here. Um, as I've mentioned before, uh, my mulch has gotten really thin because last year we didn't have the means to get new mulch down. So where the mulch is really, really bare, um, weeds are growing up like crazy like this area here and then over there I'm actually using a solarization method hoping to bake the daylights out of all the weeds and stuff before we put down fresh mulch um, but yeah there was a lot of weeds in here um, and it really did look like a jungle but um, it's looking a lot better now my son helped me yesterday uh, get a lot of the weeds out um, so now I have a little bit more work to do but um, it's looking a lot better so I'm very thankful for his help. I have uh, uh, my flower bed here. Uh, I have petunias and snapdragons and straw flowers which are brand new to me this year. They're kind of a neat flower. Uh, we had a, a nice storm roll through but with it came lots of uh, wind and so it knocked my petunias down across the walkway so I have to trim them back a little bit but um yeah um, I really like these snapdragons these are apple blossom snapdragons from MI Gardener the straw flowers they're from MI Gardener as well this variety here is the silver I also have copper and something else I'll show you in a little bit and then on the long this side of the fence of the dog run I have my uh, roses 
I just got all the weeds away from them. <clears throat> and then my pumpkin is back there. And then my other roses. This is my rose garden. Um, I also have some other flowers and stuff in here, but it's it's mainly um, started out as a garden for me to plant some roses in just because I, I like the interesting uh, varieties of different roses that there is. Anyways, that's what this is looking like. Looking a lot better than it did about 24 hours ago. Here's another area I'm trying to use the solarization method with. Um, it was a jungle. I mean, the weeds were as tall as the pallets. Um, it was a mess, and I had some more that I pulled back out there. Um, so yeah, it's it's been a challenge, um, but we're getting there. But right there's the other straw flowers. I have the copper, and then another color. I can't remember what those ones are. Um, and then bachelor buttons. My bee balm is blooming. It looks gorgeous. And you can see my loofahs starting to grow up there. I've actually have some fruit that's starting to form on them. Really exciting. A look at my medicinal bed. I've been weeding it as well. Uh, my pink cox comb's gotten really tall. It's looking really nice. Then my uh, bee balm, or no, this is lemon balm, sorry. And then my catnip, I actually have to transplant that before I lose it. It's root bound. Um, and then some more bachelor's buttons. My yarrow, I finally, or not yarrow, valerian, I finally cut it down. Um, it was done blooming, so I cut it down. And then this will actually um, grow again um, this year. It won't get as tall as it did the first round. It never does, but it dies back and then um, creates more foliage later. Then I have the yarrow. <clears throat> This is my pink echinacea. It's just a little bit lighter than the purple. Not much, but a little lighter. Um, this is the first year it bloomed. I planted it last year. And a lot of perennials, it takes them uh, at least a year before they produce their first flower. So this is my pink echinacea. And then my thyme is starting to flower. It's looking really nice, looking a lot healthier than it did before. This is a variegated lemon thyme, and it's actually starting to grow which is good because uh, last year it just kind of stayed right here in this spot but now it's actually starting to uh, grow out which is good and then my chives I never did deadhead them um, it just got really really hot and humid and I couldn't be out here in that so a lot of the garden just kind of got left alone and uh, yeah and then my whorehound um, it's doing okay not as uh, it's not spreading as much as I like um, it's kind of in the mint family but it doesn't spread as invasively as some of the mints do it's kind of a slow crawler kind of like the time here it uh, slowly creeps but uh, we're starting to get there <clears throat> you can see all my milkweed I have milkweed in various areas of my yard um, so I do try to thin it out a little bit um, because yeah it gets a lot <clears throat> then my blue hyssop <clears throat> it's really starting to come alive with pollinators <clears throat> I haven't seen a lot of pollinators around here um, just they've been hiding um, or whatever I don't know but now they're starting to come out <clears throat> I have some bumblebees I see a couple honeybees <clears throat> excuse me I have the common house fly around here um, and then I have lots of tansy wasps, so um, we're getting there. I'm, I'm just really, really thankful. Another bee balm here. And I don't know if you can see the, the bees flying around it or not, um, if the camera can pick it up. But I got a bumblebee here and some tansy wasps. <clears throat> Another safflower here. Uh, some more bachelor buttons. Um, all my bachelor buttons I got from in my gardener, in case you're wondering. <laughs> lemon bee balm. I really like this one. Um, it's brand new to the garden this year and uh, the way that it produces that blossom is a lot different uh, than the other bee balms and it's just really kind of neat to look at. Then my grape is doing really really good. I did a lot, I did some foliar feeding uh, last week um, in the uh, morning 
and a lot of things especially my grapes have really perked up since doing the full full their feeding so that's kind of good <laughs> then my bronze fennel is is doing pretty good it's an interesting plant because of the color and if you're not paying attention it look, kind of looks like it's a dead plant or something like that but it's actually the coloration of it and it's really neat looking and then tucked behind it this is scarlet flax I also have blue flax that I grew last year it's popped up in some other places um, but the scarlet flax looks quite a bit different so this is the inside of my first tunnel uh, that we are just looking at on the other side where my loofah is. Um, on each of my uh, trellises I grow lots of different vining plants um, and I have lots of different pole beans that I'm growing this year. And each one is on a different trellis to try to prevent some cross pollination. So on this trellis here I have Mother Hubbard or Mother Stallard. Um, pole beans growing <clears throat> and then uh, in the back I have strawberries on this side of the trellis I have a watermelon going that's black tail mountain and then I uh, also have tomatoes that I've planted on along here these are cucamelons first time I grew them this year we shall see how they turn out as you can see I have quite a bit going on and more flowers and stuff for pollinators. The borage is self-seeded from last year. And then uh, petunias. <clears throat> and more borage. Um, I had one plant here last year. Or maybe two. Um, borage. And then you can see that just out of that. Um, this is what I have left. I've been pulling and pulling and pulling all the extra seedlings. I still have more, more to pull out. But uh, yeah, this is all self-seeded. Same way with the tansy. My tansy is almost six foot tall. People wonder why I put it in this thing in the beginning of the year. Um, it's really, really small. That's because this thing gets really, really big. So the, it's in this box, this pallet box for support to keep it from falling into the walkway. <clears throat> Over here is where I have my cabbages planted and it looks like I'm going to have to throw down some DEMC and some um, cabbage worm uh, destruction. Not a big deal, I'll take care of that. And then over here, this is uh, Rosa Red Buckwheat, brand new this year. Um, Baker Creek carries this. And I have white buckwheat right here this is the white and I usually grow that great for pollinators great for ground cover so that I have not planted since I first moved here five years ago it just keeps reseeding and it's just nice so now we'll have this one as well tucked underneath it because this kind of fell over again with the winds so I have another uh, thyme plant in here this is my Hungarian heart tomato bed a uh, hungarian heart is a large paste type tomato um it's really a big tomato um so we're going to see how it does um but everything that is in here besides the tomatoes uh, this is all self-seeded i have cilantro in here and a lot of dill and this all came out volunteers from last year second bean trellis again i have um a lot of volunteer cilantro. Um, I also have planted in here a lot of flowers. I have some hollyhocks. This is calendula. <clears throat> More hollyhocks. And then I have some um, <clears throat> coxcomb in here. But yeah, all this cilantro um, is from last year. This bean on this trellis is the Trifano Violetto one of my favorite purple beans it's a really nice tender bean great bean love it and i try to do when i do beans just to kick it up a little bit um, i try to do a variety of colors um, so i have the green and the purple and i'm also growing a yellow cherokee the yellows grow as a bush bean though so um but yeah i try to do a variety of the snapping type bean and then I also have a variety of dry type beans and the old mother stellar is a dry type and uh, 
trying to think of some of the, uh, the other ones I have going right now, but I can't. <laughs> I have succotash in my corn corn garden. I might take you over there. I might not. The corn garden is a complete disaster right now. But uh, again, this is Trifano Violetto. I have uh, oregano here that has uh, gone to uh, flower. My oregano plant's pretty large, as you can tell. And uh, again, the cilantro and the dill. I didn't plant any of this. Um, it came back from last year. And then on the side of this trellis, I have my Japanese cucumbers growing. And then on the other side, uh, more tomatoes. I have a variety. I have San Marzano I picked up from a friend of ours. And I also have black creme. So yeah, I got a lot going on here. See the calendula. And my pot is Seashell Cosmos. I never have grown this before, but it was uh, the free seed that was given um, in one of my orders from Baker Creek. So I winter sow it and uh, yeah, that's what I got so far. So we'll see what that looks like when it blooms. Now you can see my amazing dill forest that again, I didn't plant this year, it planted itself and it actually was everywhere. You see some of the uh, weeds we're dealing with, a lot of crabgrass, and I want to call, I like calling that pigweed, but I can't remember what it's called. Um, but yeah, a lot of weeds, but this looks a lot better than it did uh, 24 hours ago. <clears throat> My peanuts, I have more calendula. This was just buried in all sorts of weeds, but now you can actually see it. Uh, so exciting. Some zinnias. So, yep. Yeah. And then on this trellis, these are the uh, uh, Kentucky Wonder Pole Bean. This is my kombucha squash. Uh, and an interesting tale about this, I was sharing it with my winter sewing gardening group. Um, I've been fighting squash bugs like a lot of people have for years and years and years. And then this year I did something um, that uh, somebody had suggested that uh, when the season first starts, when you first plant your squash, um, every day, um, you know, when it starts forming the leaves, every day, morning and night, you check for the squash bugs. Um, the adults live in the mulch over the winter, especially if you have mulch or other debris. And then in the spring, they come up out of there, come out of dormancy, and start laying eggs to start the next generation. If you can catch them um, in, before they start multiplying, you can end their game. So morning and evening, I came out here and I checked my leaves and I removed the eggs, removed the adults. Um, the adults even would hide into the crevices of the tea post here where it was shaded. And you know, you, they thought they were hiding, um, but you could see them. So um, anyways, I did that for about three weeks and I even trimmed, you can see how much I have pruned this. And that was to prevent them hiding because they hide in the soil and in any debris around it that they hide. And then they'll climb up into the leaves and hide under them uh, to lay their eggs to uh, do their business with another uh, squash bug. So I pruned all that off um, and made sure to check my, my um, bugs. And I would use a piece of duct tape and uh, stick the duct tape on the uh, insect or on the eggs to remove them from the plant and then I would roll that piece of duct tape up into a little tube and stick them in here. Um, this is just a regular water bottle and I put them in here um, instead of in the garbage that way I knew that they weren't going to get off the tape and run away or that the eggs weren't going to hatch when they were in the trash and you know more bugs come out but putting them in here, this is sealed, this is in the sun, those suckers baked in here, they fried, they're dead. So that was what I dealt with them. And I have been squash bug free for a week and a half now. Um, my due diligence and the Lord's help paid off. Because once you get rid of all those adults that were overwintering, um, 
there's no more adults to lay eggs to start the new generation. So now they're gone. And I'm just so, so thankful. So yes, if you start in the early part of the season, or as soon as you start seeing squash bugs, take the time morning and evening do due diligence and look in every look, nook and cranny, any pipe, any um, debris for the squash bug adults and their eggs and get rid of them. And then um, eventually you won't be fighting with them anymore. So there you go. There's my tip for the day. This is the other side of that trellis. Um, I had a bunch of lettuce and some carrots. They all got harvested. I have one lettuce that I allowed to go to seed. It's Butter King. Um, it was the last of the, the seeds that I had left. So I definitely need to harvest those seeds this year so I can start uh, growing some more. And then uh, again this dill self-seeded. It's elephant dill. It's really really tall. And then um, brand new, I have five different sunflowers I'm growing this year. This is brand new, I got from the seed swap. This is called white sunflower. It's a very pale yellow, really, really pretty. This is my other tomato bed um, where I'm growing other indeterminates. I have quite a variety growing on this side. I have uh, some more black cream. I have some Cherokee purple some mortgage lifter, and a blueberry cherry. I also have to plant um, my purple bumblebee eventually, and I'm still trying to figure out where to put that in. Uh, but yeah, I have quite a few tomatoes that we're growing this year, uh, some new varieties uh, to see which ones I like for uh, slicers, um, snackers, and canners. So yeah. But to give you kind of an idea of what my garden looked like 24 hours ago. Uh, you see that mess there? Yeah, it was way worse. <laughs> so like I said, um, my son really helped yesterday. We spent an hour out here. It seemed like forever, but it was just an hour and we got a lot busted out of here. Uh, you can see the piles like I was talking about that are, are still here. We did two wheelbarrow full of, of uh, debris that we gave to the chickens. This is my bean bed. It's also got uh, some flowers in it, some plantain. Um, plantain grows wild here. Um, I had a forest outside the, my garden gate um, that my husband just weed whipped because uh, it can get everywhere. But I allow the ones that are in a garden space, in a bed space like this, to grow because I use plantain. It's a great medicinal herb. You can research it, see what it's great for. But yeah, plantain is allowed to grow in here um, in certain spots. I just make sure it's not in the way of something else. And then this is my uh, Cherokee yellow bush bean. Um, I, these ones I had winter sowed earlier. And then some more I had planted a little bit later. And this is my marshmallow plant. It's three years old now. And boy, every year it just gets bigger and it's just a beautiful plant beautiful plant. Getting along to the last of my trellises here. This is one of the original trellises when I first started my garden. Um, I use cattle panels if you haven't figured that out yet. That's what they are. They're cattle panels or hog panels, uh, livestock panels. Depending on where you are, um, they have different names for them. The size that I use, and most people use, uh, they're 16 foot by 5 foot. So they're 5 foot tall by 16 foot long. And I just put them in an arch. About 5 foot apart is, is uh, what I work, uh, do. So the ends are 5 foot from each other. And it gives you about a 6.5 to 7 foot tall arch. Which is pretty good because my son is uh, over 6 foot tall. So anyways, this is my last uh, trellis that I'm going to show you today. On this side I have my Swiss chard. Um, some tomato, uh, onions are still going. Um, I have more to plant in here once my jugs start uh, growing. I have more carrots. 
Um, going to be growing some more spinach, lettuce, bok choy, things like that, and that'll go in that space eventually. Uh, my first round of peas is dying. These are the blue shelling peas. I got these from M.I. Gardener. Baker Creek has a variety called King Tut, quite similar. It's a purple pea pod. But yeah, the first, the first batch is dying away. It's time to get the second batch going. Planted on this trellis is my mammoth sunflowers. I have some here and then I have some on the back side that are, are younger so they're not near as tall. Uh, I love the really tall sunflowers. They just add um, a lot of depth to the, um, the garden because the, they're so tall. And it really goes nicely with some of these shorter items. <clears throat> So this is the inside. Um, yesterday I started pulling out some of the um, peas because I actually have um, things growing already. I have some, um, these are giant lima beans down there that I'll fill this space up. And then I planted some more cucamelons here that will fill this space up. But along this side um, I have some honeydew back there. I will be planting some more uh, peas. And just a quick look at my chickadoos. Uh, they're enjoying the being under the elderberry bush. Um, this year we opened the pen up to that um, because originally the pen stopped on the other side of the elderberry bush. But I wanted them to be able to access some good shade because it gets really hot out here without any shade. So we moved the fence back to where it is now. Um, so they can get underneath the elderberry bushes. And she thinks she's going to be the star of the show. But yeah, this is our elderberry bushes. And uh, it's doing really well. Uh, it's getting fertilized from the chickens and they do a good job of dethatching the soil. So we're hoping to be able to take them out and let them free range again. But right now they can't and I'll show you why. Okay, so this is my corn patch. <clears throat> this is painted mountain corn. It's a dry corn. I use it for decoration and or cornmeal. This area is why the chickens are not allowed to free range right now. My husband has started putting up the fence, uh, but we actually have to finish it and make it chicken proof <laughs> so the chickens can't get in here. But uh, you can see this is kind of what the other garden area look like. You can see it is a complete jungle. We have all sorts of weeds in here. We have that uh, stuff that I said I called pigweed. Japanese beetles are loving it over here. So we're kind of leaving that alone because if this keeps the Japanese beetles out of my other garden, that's cool. Especially my grapes. They devastated my grapes last year. But you can see we have that stuff. We have um, lamb's quarter. Um, we have uh, the trumpet vine seedlings from a trumpet vine plant we have nearby. We have the Queen Anne's lace growing here. Um, yeah, it's just a mess in here. Um, I have catnip, catnip that I planted. It's here. Um, if it wasn't for this um, cage, you almost wouldn't know where it's at because uh, it's buried with all this other stuff. The borage there I planted and you can just see how big and beautiful that thing is. Um, but also in here, if you guys remember from last year, I was growing tomatoes uh, for Baker Creek on a trial to see, you know, if we could grow seed for them. And I have a lot of volunteer tomatoes from those tomatoes that I grew last year that are intermingled in here as well. So it's just a giant mess. And I'm not dealing with it right now. <laughs> this garden is meant to be a fall harvest garden, so I'm not too worried about it. Um, corn can grow with the weeds, not a problem. If you look at, at fields out, you know, uh, commercial fields, unless they spray heavily with herbicides, you have lots of stuff growing with the corn. It doesn't bother it. So, uh, again, this is Painted Mountain. I have some ears developed, made really nice. I was hoping the corn would get a little bit taller, but um, we shall see. 
but also with the corn. I was doing the three sisters method this year with this variety. Uh, I have the painted mountain corn. I also have a succotash bean and it is growing up some of my other corn. I, I've seen it around. <clears throat> and also uh, I was going to plant blue hubbard squash in here. <clears throat> I don't know if I'm going to plant the squash or not. Uh, in here because of the the mess that it is already uh, I might plant it in a different area of the garden So yeah, so that is my garden right now. That is what it's looking like. I have a jungle um, But it is what it is at least it's still productive So I thank you so much for watching this video. I hope it gave you some inspiration I hope it gave you some encouragement. If your garden looks anything like mine, um, you know, just take it a little step at a time. Uh, take an hour at a time to try to tackle those weeds. Get some help if you can. Otherwise, just be encouraged that uh, you'll get there and uh, you can't do it all in a day. And uh, just thank you guys so much for your love and support and encouragement with me on my journey. Uh, it's not always easy. Um, some days I just want to throw in the towel. And so I hope that by sharing my journey that you guys are encouraged as well. Uh, if you like this video, if you found it encouraging, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to watch more of my videos, please hit that subscribe button so you're kept in the loop about when I post new videos. Um, and just share the heck out of it with those who you might think be blessed and encouraged. I hope wherever you guys are, that you are wonderfully blessed. Bye.